So we've just finished the formal presentations here at West London Business and I'm joined now by Alex Williams from TfL. One of the things that you mentioned there was the increased accountability uh, for transport within London. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and what that implies to residents and businesses in South and West London? At the moment, uh, the, the, the train contracts are managed by national governments uh, and they franchise them out to train operating companies. So if you have a complaint about the level of service you receive, <coughs> you uh, go to the operator or you go to national government. And what we're saying now is that uh, if you have an issue with the uh, network that uh, you're using, you can now go to the mayor, the elected mayor for London, uh, and they can help shape and determine the, uh, the services that are provided in London. And it has to be right that the Mayor of London is accountable for those services and those services are shaped to deliver the needs of Londoners because we're there now but also the growth that London is experiencing. So it's a really big change but it is going to take several years to kind of come into full effect. We're aware of the project underneath Hammersmith Flyover or replacement of yes. Hammersmith Flyover. Are there any other sort of areas that you could think of within our area that could work for that sort of type of scheme? Well, the, what, what's happening with those schemes is that we, we're looking at a whole series of locations across London where uh, we think you, there is an op opportunity to see if you put the roads underground, uh, whether that releases land above ground for development for more housing. So we're talking at Hammersmith about several thousand homes, other schemes in East London and West London where you could also get, deliver several thousand homes by putting the road underground. I think in West London, the other obvious thing that we need to look at is the A40 uh, and if you think about the A40 around Savoy Cervicus and Gypsy Corner they are the most congested parts of the A40, the most unreliable uh, and would it help uh, by putting in a tunnel around there uh, that would help uh, relieve congestion around there but also unlock the growth that you're getting at Old Oak Common, White City and Arms Court as well. So we're looking at them in several locations however I would add that they are very expensive and they will take many years to deliver so they are at the kind of concept stage for us to look at and assess whether they are runners. The issue for us is that they have to be really self-financing. I pay for development above uh, and that's, that is a challenge but we are certainly looking at it. The other thing you touched on was the, the uh, smart traffic lights. Tell us a little bit more about how that actually works. Well, wh how that works is in, uh, in central London, a lot of the, uh, well, most of the traffic signals are connected. So you get a, a kind of sequence of greens. So you get the most efficient uh, throughput of traffic in a junction. Uh, and you get a kind of sequence of greens for the corresponding set of junctions as well. And what we're doing, uh, is extending that technology further and further out across London. So it's not just a kind of a mechanism to manage traffic efficiently in central London, it's a mechanism we use on some of the key town centres and some of the key arteries going into and out of London. So it's really just using technology to say, how can, rather than just have the traffic lights operating independently, get them to work sequentially and collectively, and you get more through the network by having that technology. And finally, you seem very optimistic about the future of travel and transport within London. Yet, for those of us who commute, stuck in our cars, cramming onto trains, it doesn't always feel like that. What would you say to the residents and businesses of London to convince them that actually things are going to get better? Over the last 15 years, the quality of certainly the public transport network we've offered in terms of what's on the bus network and on the tube network has improved substantially. And, and my uh, a plea to passengers and fare payers is to recognise that we have got further investment plans that will get further improvements to the, the quality of the services they receive and the capacity of those services. It's essential that we keep that investment going because London is growing, it's already very congested and there's clearly a really strong business case for that kind of investment. Uh, but I am an optimist, my message to passengers and fare payers is bear with us, there's investments coming, uh, new improvements in rolling stock and an improvement in the quality of the stations that will improve their, their journey experience. Alex Williams, thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Cheers. If you'd like to hear the presentations in full from the three speakers, please do click on the links below.